Welcome to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday. Today we're going to take a look at total static pressure. Now a lot of times when people hear the words total static pressure, there's a little angst, there's a little uncomfortable feeling about that, partly because it's an area that sometimes we haven't had a whole lot of training on or we don't have the necessary tools to properly measure static pressure. However, when it comes to HVAC equipment, one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that a lot of times airflow could be one of our biggest issues um, as it relates to problems that we're seeing and or experiencing within the equipment. Now, one of the things to keep in mind that total static pressure is a little bit different from what we call velocity pressure. So when we speak of total static pressure, we're talking about force that is being exerted in all directions within our ductwork versus velocity pressure, which only exerts force in one direction. So our ability to take some readings and some measurements as it relates to total static pressure is going to give us an eye into what's going on as it relates to our airflow or airflow issues within our system. One of the things that you'll know is if you follow down and you look here on the, uh, the, the chart on side of our, our manufacturer specs, we'll notice that there's a spot that says maximum total static pressure and it has 0.5. That's kind of the standard that you'll see, but check the piece of equipment you're working on to make sure you know what that number is because that's gonna be the number that you use as a baseline to, to, to measure all of your readings against. We're gonna look at a, a few different tools and products. Um, static pressure a lot of times is referred to as the blood pressure, right, um, of our system. Um, as we go through this and we, we look and calculate these things, we're gonna be able to tell whether or not our filters are dirty, whether or not we have plugged or blocked coils, and other things that may hinder or restrict airflow throughout our system. So let me hook up some stuff. We'll, we'll fade back in here in just a minute once we have the tools hooked up and then we'll talk about the tools needed to measure total static pressure. So one of the tools that you're gonna use, you have a surgical tube hooked to a, a, a pitot tube, right? And so you'll notice that it has the funny shape at the end of it that also corresponds with this 90 degree angle that we have there. So when you insert it into your, uh, your cabinet, it'll let you know which way the, the point is in the airstream. So if this is turned the opposite direction, if that is turned up, that means that, that the point is upwards. And so you have to make sure that that is inserted correctly and in the airstream so that you know um, that you're properly reading the air as it's traveling through the system there. So for this purpose, we're gonna need this to be pointed in the downward position as air is going to be coming up and that's how we wanna take our measurement. So we'll turn that down to make sure that we're ready to go. Um, the same thing on the, on the bottom tube, uh, it's the same way as we want to be pulling the, catch the air that's coming, coming up across it. So we need to make sure that the little pointy end is pointed downward in order to do that. So then we'll hook that up, we'll connect it to the phone. And once we connect it to our phone through our Bluetooth uh, capabilities, then we'll be able to see the readings and the numbers from there. So we've already inserted our tubes into our, our, our cabinet. We are gonna be using today the ABA, AAB's smart tool, the SPM100 Bluetooth uh, manometer. So it's hooked uh, through Bluetooth to the phone. So I'll be able to get all of my readings there. Very light, small, compact, easy tool to kind of take with you. Um, it's also magnetized on the back so we can kind of stick it just about anywhere on the cabinet. Um, but we just put it in a place where it's gonna be nice and safe for us. While we're talking about that, there's a couple other things that you, you may have out there. You may not have that particular tool, but um, uh, there's also digital manometers available on the market that you can buy, made by different companies and manufacturers. Or some of you that have been around for a while and tinkered with some, some older equipment may even remember one of these guys. It's just called a Magna Helix. Um, and, and it, there's a, even cases where uh, you can have things that are so small, so tiny, um, and it's very, very hard to get a reading on our digital things, but a Magna Helix will, will pick up things that are very, very small. I know I've talked to a lot of people in the industry, uh, and they just kind of swear by these as a go-to, you know, when you really, really need to verify and check. 
you know, what we like to do is if any of you guys out there have had any experience with Magna Helix or some, some great war stories um, when you were using one or a Magna Helix saved your life, for example, please uh, write in and, and let us know about that. We'd love to hear those, those stories. Now, with all of that being said, we've got our static pressure readings going now on our, on our system. Now, a couple of things that we can do when we take these two and we add them together, and this is going to give us our total static pressure. Right? We need both a reading from the return side and a reading from the supply side in order to get the total. We are inserted right after the filter, but before the blower, and then right before we get to our coil in order to take that measurement. There's a couple of things that you can do with this, uh, with this particular dig or smart manometer is there's a little check here where you can go in and now we can look at checking different points, parts, and different things. I'm not gonna necessarily move the probes per se, but if I wanted just to take static pressure, it would show me how to put the, the tube inside of the ductwork and which way the, the airflow should be traveling across um, my tube in order for me to get a, a good reading, all right? So once we do that, we would just hit start, it would give us a number, and now we could record that number. We'd actually save it, stop and now it asks me well what do i want to do with that information do i want to add a note to it do i just want to simply save the number um, it, this could be something that we need to email back to our service manager and or the customer to make sure we have all of the information accurately recorded and on on a place where we can easily access it and recall it so i'm going to cancel that out and show you one of the other settings that we have go to the check mark again it opens up that sheet Right, and I could go to uh, pressure differential. Now, if I wanted to check maybe, uh, if you see closely there, it says I can check a drop over a coil, a transition, a filter, or just the blower, depending on where I, I place my probes. Basically, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna sandwich the thing that you're trying to get a pressure drop across, or you're trying to figure that out. So. All of these tools can be used to help you calculate and dial, dial in what your static pressure is. Understanding that information and knowing how that information can affect airflow can help you answer questions as to comfort issues that your customers may be experiencing. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Toolbox Tuesday and our discussion with static pressure. We look forward to speaking with you very soon and we'll see you next time.